Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to finish up our square DCF and just kind of walk through the final assumptions as we pulled everything together. In the previous two videos, we calculated WAC and then we also pulled together some revenue projections. So feel free to go back and watch those if you want to see how we get here. But what I've done for this DCF is I've broken it out. I've added all the, added all the different components of revenue, all the different components of costs get sold, and then the SGNA costs. And so what we've done is a COGS basis. We've held all of these, you know, we've seen increases in transaction based costs or decreases. So increased in uh, margins, so better margin. So I have this continuing to decrease. Um, so the gross margin becomes better. Subscription and service based. We saw a huge decrease here. And I think what this was really is if we look at the revenue, we've seen it grow very, very rapidly in the last couple of years. And I think this is mostly from Cash App um, after reading the 10K from instant deposits. So that does have a pretty high margin. The other piece of this subscription business is more um, company focused, um, different things like website hosting and having payment portals through there. So. I think that stuff has the lower margin, but I think the cash app has a pretty good margin base. So leaving this at kind of a the lower new standard 14%, I think seems fair. Hardware costs is always, I think they do this intentionally. They sell hardware at a loss just to get people to adopt the hardware. Um, so, you know, over time, maybe this goes down as they improve manufacturing, find better suppliers. Um, so giving them a little bit of credit there. And then Bitcoin costs. I mean, you're never going to be able to charge more than probably a one and a half to two percent commission spread when you're selling securities, um, right? If you tried to make five percent on every Bitcoin transaction, people would just go over to Coinbase. And in reality, this this margin will probably even narrow um, because apps like Robinhood will sell you Bitcoin for free without a commission. So. The fact that they're even charging a spread, I mean, that's probably just unsophisticated users on their platform that, you know, this is their first first foray into Bitcoin. Not to say they're like not smart, just saying like this is their first foray into investing and they already have Cash App and they have cash in there and this is a service they offer. So they just go that route um, as opposed to someone who's going to go open up a brokerage account, which is a lot more work and transfer money in. Um, and more focused on the fees. This is more of, I think, just your, you know, kind of entry level consumer looking to get into investing through Cash App because they have a balance there. Um, so maybe they're okay with a little bit of a commission. So we'll leave it at that. And then if we look at the remaining product costs, um, we can see product development. What I've done is I've actually calculated all of this X Bitcoin because Bitcoin skews how these are as a percent of sales. So if you actually look at the um, formula here, it's going to be. The product cost or the the sgna cost of so product development divided by the sum of the three pieces of revenue excluding bitcoin um, so this way we can kind of understand how it's been trending if we look at it without um, bitcoin because the bitcoin piece it's a large revenue driver but it's very low margin so it kind of just dis distorts everything right and we'd have to have kind of these slowly getting better and better as bitcoin price goes down or as Bitcoin revenue goes up, these become smaller percentages, um, which, you know, I'm going to guess there's not a lot of product development, sales and marketing in GNA related to Bitcoin. Um, like there's probably some, but I think looking at it as a percent probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So holding it constant to these other pieces, I think makes a little bit more sense. Um, and so if we look at, I guess we'll start here with product development, right? It's historically actually been around 16 to 15 and then 18. So, you know, I'm actually going to just quickly update this, reduce it a quarter percent a year, and this will get us back to um, that 16, 15% over the, the next decade. For sales and marketing, we saw a really big spike in 2020. Um, you know, I think that this, this, this has to decrease back down to kind of more historical levels. Um, so just taking a percent off a year and actually, you know, I'll just continue that trend until we get to 13%. Um, GNA looks like it's been pretty steady the last four years at 10 to 11 percent. So I've just held this at 11, and then transaction and loan losses. Um, historically, it's been three percent, so just leaving it there. So those are kind of our main assumptions um, we've made. And with this, right, we get a we get a value in a market cap of 21 billion. And if we compare that to their current market cap, right, they're currently trading at a $101 billion market cap. So 
definitely a bit overvalued. Um, and, you know, I think if we look in the last year when their Bitcoin revenue really took off, right, their stock has gone from 52 to 200. So if you look at that, it's 4x, um, almost five times. So like if you back out this crazy growth they've had since the pandemic, and it's not like they really dipped much in the pandemic. Like, yeah, they went from 80 to 30, but they had a big run up right before. Um, you know, during the pandemic, they really just kind of dipped back down to where they had been trading throughout 18 and 19. Um, but to see this crazy run up now, um, you know, right, if you shave off, you know, 80% of their market cap, you're at 20 billion, you're kind of right where we are. So like, I would say pandemic level, pre-pandemic level, they were probably pretty fairly valued. My guess is this massive Bitcoin revenue people saw in 2020, they're like, oh, great, ton of top line growth. Now they just need to control the cost aspect of it. But when you look at it, like that's actually not possible because they're just buying Bitcoin and reselling it and charging like a 2% commission. Um, so uh, definitely overvalued for where they are today. They're probably, you know, if you, if you're following the stock closely, you know, wait for some of this to pull back the market to kind of normalize out and get in probably around 50 or 60 and you're probably not in a bad spot. I think it's a good business that is going to continue to grow. I think the payment services they offer is, you know, really useful. The cash app piece is growing like crazy. Um, so I think there's a lot of really interesting things here. Uh, but I think the Bitcoin revenue is just kind of distorted the view of how the company is actually performing. Um, but and we, we're using a whack of 15%. This is what we calculated. Um, so right, if you think Square is actually not risky at all, and you think only 10%, right, then okay, you only need to lose 60% of their current market cap. So if you could get in closer to like a hundred a share, you'd probably be pretty happy. Um, so I think there's, you know, definitely room to tweak if just depending on how you feel about how risky it is. But if you calculate their, their whack, it is a whack of 15%. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and, um, we'll, we'll start working on another company shortly. Thanks for tuning in.